Hello everybody, Brian here from quantlabs.net. So, I am doing a webinar this Monday. Today is Friday, 11.30 a.m. May 31st. I'll be doing a webinar called Pair Training Potential with Forex. So, I'm going to show you a preview in this video, and I'm actually going to do Q&A and maybe do some updated uh, stuff uh, in this webinar, Monday, June 3rd, 12 p.m. noon. So you can come here under the blog, Pair Trading Potential with Forex for the details. In here, lots of people go, well, where do you get the code? How do you do it right here? If you come under an article I just posted, I believe it was yesterday, with Ernie Chin, our friend, getting a lot of the info from him. But uh, this article is called Example URL Links of Long-Term Mean reverting strategy code with Ernie Chan. And, and Ernie Chan is one of the many places. So here you'll, you'll see all the bits and pieces of all the code I've taken and put it into these following scripts. So that's what's going on. Now, before I go on, if this does work, which looks like it's got some big potential, uh, as you know, I've been working on the um, momentum strategies, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, what led me to where I'm at today. So if you come under here on the Quant Analytics membership under the store, you'll be able to get all the charts, everything, which will be updated every hour, every four hours for all this stuff that I'm going to show you. And it's for both crypto and Forex. And it's 47 bucks a month right now. You get grandfathered in for the rest of your life as long as you stay a member, and it's going to go up $97 and probably even higher as this uh, moves on because you'll also get access to the private chat server for life. Uh, you get all the inside scoops that I pose there, and that's where I talk to other, we'll call them experts, that guide me to where I'm at today. Kind of like a mentor. All right, so let's talk about what we're looking at. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. Now, here what you're looking at is what we call the um, the hour, sorry, the Hearst four hour chart now, or a uh, table. Now in here, I've got 18 pairs. This is them all downloaded from Oanda. These are the pairs I can use to get uh, access to the order book through the API for long and short positions for all of these pairs, uh, 18 of them, at any time while the markets are open. And these are the only pairs I've access to. Anything else tells me there's not enough liquidity, that's why it's not provided. So what I've done was I've taken moving averages of uh, a fast and a slow of 4 and 24. This will be tweaked. Um, when I'm looking at, it seems to people tell me it works as 10 and 20, but again, that's open to debate. Here we have moving averages that are calculated on these particular pairs. In this case, Australian dollar against the Japanese yen gives out these signals, da 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 da. Um, and this is useful because one of the things that I quickly learned uh, with all this stuff when it comes to um, the Hearst uh, component, there are some concerns. And what, what basically, let me show you what. Uh, first does first this is probably what led me to the first point first let me see if I can find a uh, an example of it uh, let's see robot well blah 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 research gate daily price action okay maybe I might find it here now, I'm, let, me, let me make a comment about this particular link, DataCamp. This is quite good. Uh, it probably has what I'm looking for on, on Hearst uh, component. So in here somewhere it was robot, yeah, this one right here. So this robotwealthone.com, there's two parts. What uh, Hearst does, it tells you if a particular a time series is mean reverting or momentum. So what I've been doing for the last close to, we'll call it a year, focusing on time series for a momentum, thinking that the time series is in a momentum or a trending mode. 
guess what? Majority of those do not trend. So as a result, uh, you know, no matter how I trade it, it's going to lose money because I'm applying the wrong strategy type to it, meaning it's a time series that's in mean reverting mode, yet it's uh, in uh, in uh, a momentum mode or vice versa, and therefore, I'm not saying it is the real reason, but could lead to the reason of why momentum trades fail. Oh, um, one, one big takeaway I can, I can tell you about momentum versus uh, mean reverting is that this is consistently true, is that momentum happens on average from what I've read from, again, experts, 40% of the profits for momentum are profitable. So 60% of them will fail, be negative, money losing. So you got to be aware of that. Mean reverting work supposedly 80% of the time, but much tinier profits. But because you have a higher probability of profit uh, over time, over uh, the length of the opportunity where the pair or symbol is mean reverting, you can make more money, but each position is much tinier. So in here, there's all this source code that you can use to uh, measure mean reverting, or sorry, the Hearst component. And that Hearst component will tell you, is it mean reverting, is it in a geo, uh, geometric Brownian motion, or um, uh, the other one of momentum or trending. Now, the geometric Brownian motion is telling you it's kind of like a, a random walk. It can go either way, but that's like one out of 10. So one of the big concerns with that is that um, the Hearst lags. Now, um, one of these links here that I tell you has that, uh, well, it depends upon your time series or, or sorry, your time frame. Uh, and, and there's also an article here uh, somewhere, Ernie Chan said the same thing, is that it depends upon your time frame. So what I do is I have different Hearst uh, components that I use. And um, the best one for me is the four hour, okay? Um, so in there, that will tell me if out of those 18 pairs that I showed you are either mean reverting or um, mean reverting or momentum. Um, and I've kind of fooled around with uh, five minute data, four hour data, daily data, all different types of periods. And I know that this thing lags and it might not be the best, but it seems potentially, I'm not saying 100%, it seems to work best for, um, for, uh, for our data. Now, the stats say that the average out of these 18 pairs, I would say maybe out of 18, four of them may be in momentum. Of the other 14 would be mean reverting. Okay, so do consider that. So out of that test and understanding that led me to a new path of thinking, mean reverting. So I dug and dug and dug, asked around on my chat server, among other people, including Ernie Chan himself, about this. I'm still waiting to hear back from Ernie Chan. If I get answers, I'll put those and share those on the uh, webinar. So with that, um, I've, I'm kind of like, I've, I've, I've moved ahead to code a pairs trade um, with all of this info that I kind of brought together and put it all together to come up with uh, a few things. So number one is co-integration. Now, if you go through all those links, you'll understand the difference between correlation and co-integration. Um, I focus knowing what I know from all of this is co-integration, uh, what you do. So again, we have the same eight pairs. So I have a co-integration script. Um, and essentially for each pair that I, I show you here, um, very important stats here. Now, people have been asking about MetaTrader uh, or any platform, a retail trading platform. If you don't have access to, in my case, OANDA or through your broker, or even for crypto on exchange, on an exchange, you have to get access to the order book. Uh, you have to get access, in this case with OANDA, I've, I've written some scripts here that will take of any pair at that time, 
how, what's the percentage of it long, what's the percentage of it short. From that, I'm able to determine and can confirm without a doubt that this works, 100% certainty, that knowing that you have, in this case, 72% short versus long, uh, chances are the price is going to get driven down. And that's at any time that when I run this script. Okay, so out of that, there's a couple of things we also need to measure is spread. Okay, on, on that, so I, 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 I do a test there. My spread needs to be usually less than seven um, and uh, or less than eight, then I'll take the trade or consider it. Usually all these pairs, it usually is eight, but you'll see the spread may be really, really tight here. In this case, the euro against the uh, Swiss franc. So there's that. Um, I also take a ratio between these two, uh, between the long and the short. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, also, I measure the ROCP over four hours, take the average. And again, this is the ratio that I measure on the long short ratio between uh, these two long and short. And that's on each pair. From there, um, I can determine um, do we have a short opportunity for this pair or a long opportunity. So again, if out of 18, let me just tell you how many long opportunities we have. And this just was just ran in the last half hour, so it's fairly uh, current information. Okay, so let me just go here. So we got, remember, 18 pairs. So, uh, so we want uh, a long opportunity. See, see, let's see how many long opportunities we have here. So one, two, three, four. Is that five? I'm going to start over again. <laughs> I'm pretty useless at this. Okay. So we got uh, one, <laughs> two, three, four. So out of four, out of 18, four of them are long opportunity. Now, in the news I just read, there may have been a flash crash in both the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc because of liquidity drying up. So it's a concern that there may be some kind of liquidity event on a global scale in the next week, two weeks, as concerns uh, move. And usually when the markets, as they're going through a meltdown right now, usually the safe plays are in franc and Japanese yen. But they're saying on a Reuters article I just posted um, that the uh, both uh, currencies, there may be liquidity concerns there. And as a result, there may be some actually intervention from the Swiss National Bank to um, to cover that. So be be aware of that down the line because that will greatly affect <clears throat> these these currency pairs. So we have that. So we have four out of eighteen pairs that are longs. So showing you all of this stuff. If I go to the bottom of this, now we get into co-integration. So. As I said here, we measure the uh, ratio of the long and short, and we can sort them. So right now, the shorting, uh, sorry, the long opportunities are in these four pairs because these are positive. So four out of 18 pairs are have long opportunities. The strongest that's been like this for a week now is the Australian uh, Euro, Australian dollar, US dollar, the Swiss franc, Euro and the Swiss franc. And euro and the British pound. It's been like that for over a week now. So we run co-integration co checks against one another and what we're doing is we're taking the, the strongest three and the three weakest. Okay so what I'm showing you right now is uh, from yesterday. So these are the ones that may have some form of co-integration using p-value and again you go through those links you see these formulas and what they generate, but maybe these two pairs may be uh, co-integrate with each other. So you have a long and a short opportunity between these pairs. So here's the closing prices of them all. And then we come back to, well, let's do a back test on the long and short opportunities. So again, all the data here is generated uh, with the, the 
the uh, the relationship of the co-integration between these pairs, and I'm only doing one. So what we're doing is we have a long and a short um, between these two. Okay, so the closest we may have that co-integrate are these euro, Swiss franc against pound against the uh, Swiss franc as a short. So you can see here, these are our uh, ratios that we calculate. Again, you go through the links, all that, blah, 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 blah. And what we do now is we generate um, a spread between the two of them. And then we have a ratio that we calculate for long and short um, potential. So these are them. So out of that, we get buying ratio uh, and our um, buying and exit potential by using all of these. And um, the, this right here uh, on the exit is the money, profit loss, and so on. I'm still studying this stuff, but I'm gonna generate some charts from this. Again, you can get all this from the links I provide. But you can see all of the opportunities here on the uh, profit. I think this one was profitable. This, 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 this opportunity, this opportunity is profitable. So again, that is what you can do. Um, the next thing is, I want to show you the difference between the co-integration between today and yesterday. Now, uh, any of these scripts I can run any time and, and set the 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 um, the uh, ratio, uh, the, the co-integration and all that. I can run it any time. Change the factors of, of 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 all the moving averages that I'm using and so so forth. So I can change all that, and that can be tweaked to my liking. So let me just uh, look for what I wanted to show you. So right here, this is today, the co-integration today. Okay. And then here, this this co-integration is uh, yesterday. So you can see the difference already between the two is that the uh, this this pair, again, it's, these have been kind of like stable for about a week, I'm going to assume. But, <coughs> but I can check it every couple hours or every day before I run this test to see if the co-integration still exists on a set of data. So here... You can see it's still, um, it, no, actually it's changed. So yesterday, you can see here, this may be, not saying it was or is, but this was an opportunity yesterday, potentially, as a co-innovation pair, uh, Euro Aussie as a long, and then Euro Japanese yen as a short. And that, and that was at this ratio of 0 0.08. And then uh, euro, Swiss franc, and then pound against the uh, franc as a, as a short. And again, this is the ratio. So here it switches. So the euro, Australian dollar, European, Japanese yen pretty well drops off today. But um, the other one, euro, franc, pound against the franc as a short still stays on but it, it, it becomes more likely it is uh co-integratable so these are the potential so um we we have to run this so every so often to make sure that the the co-integration co between the two pairs hold um so we need to run this test to get this p-value at all times so we need to be fully aware of that so I just want to show you this, that this is a form of mean reverting. Um, and uh, the thing is, is that I'll throw in some charts, hopefully I can generate today, and show you the visuals of this, and maybe do another redo um, on Monday live, and then do a Q&A on it. Again, I'm not going to do any, uh, on any, uh, uh, what do we call, uh, video playbacks for this, because this is, the, I'm going to show kind of like already talking about the mechanics of this. So it's good. this video will stay up for a few days um, and then remove and put it into my paywall. I'll put behind the paywall and same with the video playback as well. So there is opportunity here, but just understanding how this works. Here it is. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to 
show you some uh, videos. Again, um, if this works out, and majority of the time, uh, the uh, all the pairs do a mean revert, majority of them. So if that's the case, knowing this kind of pair trading potential, I'll add into the um, this section of the analytics, as I mentioned before, and get in on the price while it's fairly low. And that, hopefully we'll see you on Monday with the details again. Let me just see here. Uh, oh, yeah. So data camp, this, this, this was an interesting, very, very detailed, very meaty. Uh, this data camp looks pretty good for what you may pay. Uh, so who knows? Uh, other than that, we shall talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.